Hey, this is Rebecca Dirks with PremierGuitar.com. We're here checking out Dan Donigan's gear for Disturbed with his guitar tech, Trevor Cole. How are you doing tonight? I'm good. How are you? Good. Uh, you want to start off by showing us the guitars that Dan's using on tour? I would love to. Dan has his own signature model, Schechter guitar. This is the Dan Donigan model. See, it's got his name right up here on the truss rod cover. It's very nice. Uh, he just switched over to this company. He's been pretty happy with them. And I think that, in general, the body style for this guitar matches him a little bit better because he's a big guy. So he's using Schechter guitars. Basically, he has three different tunings, four different sets of guitars. Each one has its backup. Uh, you know, obviously different tunings for different guitars, and then he uses a tremolo system for certain leads on different songs, you know. He does a guitar change probably every two songs. And is that a tremolo put on the signature model? Uh, yeah, it is. Yeah. Uh, can you talk about the tunings a little bit? Which ones he uses? Uh, he uses a D-sharp standard, which is a half step down of a normal standard E tuning. Uh, he uses a drop C-sharp, which is pretty, again, a standard style tuning for these days because it allowed so many singers to sing in a different key because E was too high for some people. Uh, so he uses that as a drop tuning, which is a half step down with a drop tuning. He uses a drop C, which is a little bit lower, couple different songs a lot of stuff off indestructible is in drop c and then uh the drop c sharps are the songs for the tremolos for the leads and and uh stuff off the new record off of asylum sounds good so uh, basically other than the tremolo and the tunings they're going to be just a whole rack of the signature sectors yeah he plays the same guitar like last, when I first got on this tour with Dan, he was playing all the exact same guitars in different colors. That's what makes him feel comfortable. And he is extremely about having things be as regimented as possible. He wants it to be the same. He wants the show to seem together every night. We have a small ritual we do. It's the same every time. And, uh, and it helps him feel comfortable and get into to do what he needs to do, which is what basically my job is to make him feel confident. In. It keeps the shows consistently awesome for the every audience. I hope so. Okay. Um, so then what amps is he running the guitars through? Uh, this is Dan's uh, A and B rigs. He has a redundant rig system because if something goes wrong in the during the show, there, there really isn't much time uh, to correct the problem if it does happen. So this is his A rig, which is basically a, a, almost exact replica of, of uh, this, you know, the A and the B are the same. He uses Sure Wireless. Uh, we run it into uh, these Quad 4 preamps made by Randall. So that's the preamp sound that he gets. He's got a rack-mounted Crybaby Wah that he uses a controller on his pedal board to, uh, to do different stuff on the fly, you know, uh, during the show. Uh, the Voodoo Labs GCX loop switcher, it's pretty standard stuff that everybody uses. Uh, Digitech, and they're, they've been great to Dan. They've been really good to, to me as well, seeing that we get all the things that we need. And he has his own signature uh, pedal, the Dan Donegan weapon pedal, which he uses actually two of them in this rack in uh, different settings. And they do a bunch of different things. So many things I can't label or list all of them. I would have to look it up. But it's more than the average pedal that does one sound or two sounds or a combination. It does five or six different varied things. And uh, it, was, it was pretty cool, I think, uh, when I first came to, to know about it. I, I, I'm a firm believer in the, in the weapon pedal, just as something for a guitar player to have so much, you know, available in one, one unit. Um, can you talk about the other pedals on that yeah. drawer real quick? Yeah. This is a big part of Dan's sound right here. I mean, he uses it a lot. This Korg Tone works. It's set to a certain setting, much like uh, Eddie Van Halen had his flanger pedal that was set to the same setting. That was his magical sauce. That, that thing is pretty over some clean tones, over some dirty tones. He uses it on a lot of stuff. Um, the Metal Zone, which is, again, another pretty standard, well-known cheaply made you know but durable boss pedal um, a lot of people use it for overdrive dan uses it for a dropout so he uses the eq in it and pulls it back so he can come down to a tone that's like a real harsh and raunchy kind of 
uh, noise boxy, radio-ish, transistors kind of sound, and then when he kicks back into his normal tone, it's back with this really heavy dynamic. And um, this angry troll we get from uh, from Jim Dunlop Manufacturing, and we've been trying to uh, integrate it into the system, but we just it takes time to get Dan to sit with things and and us to really feel confident about something going into the rig is a serious insert and he doesn't like change he likes things to be good like i said regimented so we haven't really found a great place for it yet but because it's controlled and you can select this by size of fist as you can see on there it had to be left in so this this is all the sauce of dan's sound is basically these five pedals here this digitech effects unit is the other bit of sound that is his you know signature tones and all the everything else this is dan's silence section which is and i can't say enough about these things i was told about these by uh linus from the deftones who's a good buddy of mine he said you got to check out isp technologies and their uh their decimator pedal because it gates in a way that other pedals didn't before everybody was using these ns2s and these noise suppressor pedals that boss made and i found out when i finally got to use a decimator the difference between what colors your sound and what doesn't and the decimator doesn't color your sound it actually just gates all the headroom and all the uh, amp noise and will also gate the the pickup from you know squeal or screech or standing in front of the cabinet you know too close but when you engage it and disengage it you you can't hit, tell any difference it's it's so discreet it's it's awesome so to those people who i have not yet talked to thank you very much and the power amp section is these down here these rt uh 250s we use one uh to uh power the iso cabinet which is just basically one of dan's randall cabinets with three microphones, four microphones on it, I'm sorry, inside of a box, which is the secret of the sound as well. It's as, as important as any of, of this system is having this ISO box set aside with the lid closed with microphones in it. It's like being in the studio on tour and keeping your sound really tight, and that's part of Dan's stuff. It's, it's, it's tight, it sounds grisly, and, and it sears, you know, so. Use one of those for the ISO cabinet. He's got two cabinets on stage, one on stage right, one on stage left. We used to have a multitude of back cabinets and, you know, amp stacky things. Most of it was set cart and there were a lot of dummies in there, but he had a lot of stage volume and a lot of, we had four cabs at least on stage at all times. Now it's just down to two. He's running all of his in-ears. So his cabinets on stage are just for monitoring. They're just for sound and for him to get feedback. They're not for the audience. They're not, there's no microphone on them. All the microphones come from this magical box right here, which we were speaking about earlier, the ISO cabinet, sorry. And uh, the, so the sound guys mount the microphones in there. They leave them in there all the time. It travels that way. And uh, they just come and obviously adjust them and make sure they're okay day to day, make sure they're in the right position. I check it with it open during the day, but when showtime comes, it closes, it locks, and the sound isn't bled with anything else. There's no vocals in there, there's no drums in there, there's no people rat-a-tat-tatting on the outside of this case, because I'm here to make sure that they don't do that. So, um, you know, this is, this is basically the heartbeat of Dan Donegan's tone, is those two racks, this little box right here is, is the, of the utmost importance. And now we're being driven by the rack up here on stage, which does the, uh, some of the click and uh, backing tracks and things like that. It also switches the Voodoo Lab pedal board. So Dan doesn't do any foot switching other than having to wah his stuff from the wah controller. So he is, yeah, of course, of course. Uh, signal comes from the drum rack sends into, uh, it comes from an ethernet cable and it's converted into MIDI via this tiny little box right here, which sends the control messages to the ground control, the brain of all of this system. So before he would have to manually hit buttons, be at the pedal board at his position on stage when the change in the song came. And that was very limiting to him. He was almost tethered to the t pedal board, having to be there during the different guitar changes, knowing he had to switch the tone or had a lead coming up. Now, with the messages coming from somewhere else, 
unless he's using his wah pedal, he's free to roam and do everything he wants to do. And it, it really changed things a lot for him. It, it brought such a smile to his face. I think uh, it allowed him to do things he had never done before because he had always been tethered to the pedal board. So, I'm so he's uh, using the WADA control of the Rackmount Crybaby. Yep. Uh, what, what's he use the whammy? Uh, Digitech whammy comes in for a couple different songs. It, on this tour, we're not using it because it doesn't come into the set. Um, but it's, uh, it's used mostly on a double up, uh, two octave up wah situation where it rocks forward and, and it's uh, up to a, like a really high squeal or something like that. Um, Digitech has been really good to Dan and really good to me as well in dealing with their products. I've, I've been around them for a really long time and I'd found that after a while a, a whammy pedal only takes so much abuse, you know, so I came up with this concept and got with a, a set carpenter on how to fix the problem. It doesn't work for everybody but it works for me. If you look down underneath right here, there's a little spring that's been added that rocks the whammy back into position because after so much adjustment, this wheel would get worn out. And if you didn't replace things with the, the same exact parts or find yourself more rubber washers, I mean, it just became this like throwing whammy pedals in the garbage and wasting, you know, componentry that still worked, but the pedal was just not functional. And out here, you don't really have as much time to fix little small things like that. So I was like, what about a spring? Let's try this idea, and uh, and it's worked out actually really good. So you know, it's, it, you innovate where you have to, and that's where some of the best ideas are born, are right here on tour, because you're you know, trial by fire. You're, you're here every day trying to make it work as best as it can, and uh, and that's I, that. That was just one of the innovations that's happened since I've been on this tour. It seems like you guys just really have this locked down, so it runs smoothly. It's really cool to see. That's what anybody would want, right? Yeah, right. Yeah. Um, is there anything else in terms of his cables, picks, strings, and stuff that's uh, worth noting? Uh, I guess if you're talking about picks, we it would have we'd have to bring up the glamour shot pick, which you know I don't know if it may it'll even make it to the uncut version of this, but this is Dan's pick from Dunlop that he had designed himself, I imagine. Uh, with his new Schecter guitar, and they obviously make lots of picks for us and give them to us for free. They're a great company. Scott Uchida is the, one of the greatest guys I've ever worked with in artist relations. But the picture we kind of give Dan a little bit of a hard time about because he's looking real serious over there, but he's playing right here. So we, we call this the glamour shot, which I think is great. I also have humor because there's a lot of serious business going on around here and most certainly, especially, right here. And everybody knows that. Over on the other side, they have fun, they play around, they drink shots during the show. Over here, it's full focus, it's, it's locked down, and it's rigid for the hour that, that our set is. People don't come around, because they know not to. Well, it keeps uh, the sound exactly the way they want it, and that's the goal, so. That's what we're working for. All right. Well, thank you very much for uh, showing us all of the rig, and uh, we got to get going so they can finish with the uh, line check, I think. So. Yeah, my pleasure. It was nice meeting you. Yep, nice Great to meet you, too. You. This is Rebecca Dirks for PremierGuitar.com.